Hi everyone, and thank you for joining me today. My name is Natalie Iglesias. I'm a mental health and wellness peer educator. And today I will be discussing how mindfulness benefits. To just give you a brief outline of what I'll be discussing today, I'm gonna to start off with defining mindfulness, followed by the differences between mindfulness and meditation, then a brief discussion on the health benefits of mindfulness, and then finishing off with three mindfulness techniques that anybody can use. So what is mindfulness? The definition of mindfulness states that it is a mental state achieved by focusing one's awareness on the present moment while calmly acknowledging and accepting one's feelings, thoughts, and bodily sensations, and it is used as a therapeutic technique. The key difference between mindfulness and meditation, as many think they are the same thing, is that mindfulness is an awareness of our outer life, what we're doing, while meditation is an awareness of our inner life. So to further explain the differences between these two practices, uh, meditation is the formal practice of finding peace within. Awareness of peace is achieved when mental chatter is decreased. While meditating, we are mindful of our thoughts from the viewpoint of observer without clinging to the thoughts themselves. Our thoughts float by like clouds while we learn something about our inner selves. We can see how negative our thinking can be or how much time we waste dwelling on the past. This is crucial information for those interested in personal growth and transformation. On the other hand, mindfulness refers to the practice of present moment awareness that can be applied to any waking situation. It is a way of being actively aware of what you're doing while you're doing it. Society's obsession with multitasking often leads us to do too much at once without focusing fully on each stage of the experience. Being fully aware and engaged in an activity can make, uh, can make a situation less stressful because it initiates a perspective free of judgment. When practicing mindfulness, the mind isn't guessing at the future or creating a mountain out of what is actually a small hill. If we can let go of our controlling ways, consciously observing what is what is without labeling it or placing an opinion on it, we can be free of the stress of expectations, regrets, and fears in order to fully accept each moment and all that it offers. So to even further explain the differences, just a brief uh, explanation of the differences. Mindfulness can be practiced both formally and informally. The formal practice is mindfulness meditation. The informal practice is mindfulness of our daily activities. So it's something that can be done, you know, not really in a personal space, but just done at work, at school, anywhere. Um, mindfulness is a general awareness of the world. And then meditation, you set a special time to practice it, usually in a special place that has a silent surrounding. Um, it requires mindfulness and it requires you to be with your inner self. So moving on to 12 proven health benefits of mindfulness that I'm sure many are unaware of. I, I know many are aware of the fact that mindfulness can reduce stress, but there are many other benefits to it. As you can see here, um, there are ways in which mindfulness helps not only mentally, but physically. So. Uh, starting off with the one down here, uh, mindfulness helps manage chronic pain, it boosts immunity, supports working memory, improves quality of sleep, restores childlike wonder, improves relationship satisfaction, reduces stress, bolsters cognitive flexibility, may help lower blood pressure, improves cognition, decreases emotional reactivity, and increases empathy. So all around mindfulness can help in so many ways. So finally, I'll be discussing three mindfulness techniques. I will start off with breathing exercises and you can do this with a breathing script or a guided video. I've provided a video for you. Uh, the second one is guided imagery, which I will describe uh, when the slide comes. You can use memories, imagination, audio, pictures, videos, or a combination of these. Traditionally, guided imagery is used uh, with simply just audio um, provided by uh, a professional practitioner, but you can do guided imagery informally. Uh, for example, like there are YouTube videos 
that show a picture and then someone provides a script for you to um, engage in. And then finally, there is muscle relaxation. And you can use video and or audio, or you can learn a technique and perform it from memory. So starting with the first one, uh, this is a breathing exercise. It is a video for you and feel free to follow along as it plays. The first exercise in our relaxation toolkit involves something we've all experienced at some point or have been very close to experiencing, shortness of breath during times of stress. When we're anxious or stressed, our breathing becomes very shallow. The breath we take isn't fully drawn into the lungs and there is more contained in our chest. This brings us to our very first exercise of stress reduction, deep breathing. It's also known as abdominal breathing, belly breathing, or diaphragmatic breathing. This technique consists of breathing through the belly and not the chest in a slower and deeper fashion. There are many physical benefits to this simple technique. Deep breathing lowers your heart rate, your blood pressure, increases your energy levels, and decreases your muscle tension and pain. Not to mention the mental health benefits, including decreased anxiety and stress, as well as improved sleep and a more focused mind. Let's practice. Sit or lie down in a comfortable position Begin by taking a deep breath in and a long relaxing breath out. The idea here is to achieve a slow and steady breath. Go ahead and place one hand on your chest and your other on your abdomen if this feels comfortable for you. Now try and keep your chest rather still and have your abdomen expand and contract as you deeply breathe. Some people find it helpful to count while they take their deep breaths. For example, you may count like this. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. In, two, three, four. Out, two, three, four. This counting can help you with consistency. Try to practice this regularly a few times throughout the day for a few minutes. It will relax you physically and mentally during times of stress. All right, so that was the breathing exercise one. Uh, moving on to the second technique, which is guided imagery. Uh, before I go into it and give you an example, um, I'd like to explain it first because many people don't even know what guided imagery is or what it's used for. So guided imagery is a form of focused relaxation that helps create harmony between mind and body. Uh, it is a way of focusing your, your imagination to create calm, peaceful images in your mind, thereby providing a mental escape. Guided imagery provides a powerful psychological strategy that enhances a person's coping skills. Imagery involves all the senses, as well as one's whole body and emotions. It is a way of viewing your ideas, feelings, experiences, and interpretations. Imagery can stimulate changes in bodily functions, such as heart rate, blood pressure, and respiratory patterns. It can help you tab inner strengths to find hope, courage, and other qualities that can help you cope with a variety of conditions. So uh, in this first slide for it, I provided you just examples of images that you can either use for guided imagery or images that people may describe uh, during guided imagery. Um, for me personally, I'm somebody who likes to already have a picture. Not always. Uh, sometimes I like to imagine things myself. 
but uh, sometimes it is nice to have a picture when I'm just feeling kind of lazy, don't really want to do the mental work of coming up with uh, a place. So I'll just find one of these beautiful pictures and um, I'll find a script to listen to and uh, I'll just go from there. Um, I have provided you guys with a script. Um, it is an excerpt from a book called Yoga Meditations, Timeless Mind-Body Practices for Awakening by Julie Lusk. Um, I will not be reading it to you. You can look at it yourself. You can pause the video and watch it uh, and read it yourself. But um, I'll just give like a brief rundown of what it says. So basically it it first tells you to breathe in, breathe out, you know, get your breathing level steady, get yourself relaxed, close your eyes. And then um, it's followed by uh, imagining, um, for instance, being in the woods, like the picture behind it. And um, basically treating it as like your private hideaway. And then they follow by describing what it looks like. Uh, what you see, what you smell, what you hear, just everything. So just engaging your senses and imagining what you would sense if you were there. So uh, this is the third technique. It is muscle relaxation. And I have also pro uh, I provided a video for this technique as well. Um, again, feel free to follow along and practice while she goes through the exercises. Progressive muscle relaxation. Stress, whether you realize it or not, creates tension in the body. Patients with rheumatic diseases tend to have a lot of muscle tension, especially when trying to cope with the daily joint stiffness and pain. This next exercise, known as progressive muscle relaxation, involves purposely tensing and relaxing different muscles so you can more easily identify the difference between feeling tense and feeling relaxed. Just like the first exercise, the end goal here is to feel less stressed. Also, it's important to note that you should not engage in any of these exercises if you have pain in different parts of the body or distress or limitations. You should not be in any discomfort while doing these exercises, so please feel free to modify or eliminate any of the strategies as you see fit. Let's practice. Again, find a comfortable place to either sit or lie down. You can begin by taking a few deep, relaxing breaths. Let's begin by bringing attention to your feet. Curl your toes in tightly to feel the tensing muscles of the foot, of both feet. Hold this for a few moments before releasing the tension and relaxing the feet. Do you notice the difference? Noticing the difference between a tense and relaxed muscle is the purpose of this exercise. Now we're going to repeat this relaxation exercise with different parts of the body. Now, point your feet down, pointing the toes down toward the floor, feeling the tension in your calf muscles. Hold that for a few moments and release. Once again, noticing that change from moments of tension and moments of relaxation. Now, bringing attention to the thigh muscles, point the toes upward toward the ceiling, feeling the tension in the large muscles of the thighs. Hold that for a few moments, and when you're ready, begin to release. Now bring attention to the buttocks, tightening the muscles of the buttocks as you sit or lie on the floor, once again, holding this for a few moments and gently relaxing. Bringing attention to the belly, to the muscles of the abdomen, 
and tensing these muscles as if you're bringing your belly button in, pushing your belly button in toward the spine and holding here for a moment and gently relaxing. Noticing the back and here just gently arching the lower back and seeing if you can feel the tension along the muscles in the back as you arch the back. Hold for a moment or two and then slowly release. Working our way up to the shoulders, a place where we tend to hold a lot of tension. Bringing your shoulders up towards your ears, squeezing them up, holding them for a moment and slowly and gently releasing the shoulders. Now focusing on the hands, making the hands into a fist and squeezing tightly. Hold it another moment and slowly release. Now working up to the arms, you can just gently Keep the fists if you like and bring the lower arms toward the upper arms. Pulling the forearms up towards the upper arms, tightening the biceps and slowly releasing. And finally, bringing attention to the face and the mouth. Here, we're going to squeeze our eyes tight, holding them shut tight, pursing the lips. holding for a moment and slowly relaxing. Once you've tensed and relaxed all of these muscles, notice how your body feels. Allow yourself to feel totally relaxed as you sit or lie here. You can do this exercise daily. If you have time, you can tense and relax each series of muscles twice for a more extensive relaxation exercise. All right, so that was the muscle relaxation video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed learning about the other techniques as well and just mindfulness in general. Um, so moving on to the key takeaways uh, to finish off the presentation. Uh, remember that mindfulness can help reduce stress and improve focus, which allows it to help with school and work. Mindfulness can be done informally. There is no wrong place to practice mindfulness, and there is no one technique for mindfulness. Choose what's best for you, whatever you're comfortable with, whatever you feel like doing. Um, don't put too much pressure on yourself. It does not take much effort to practice mindfulness. Uh, it has so many benefits, so please, please give it a shot if you feel like it could help you. And that is the end of my presentation. Thank you guys so much for watching. And for U of M students, uh, please remember that CAPS counseling is free and confidential for all students. If you or someone you know wants to make an appointment with CAPS, email umdearborncaps at umich.edu to set up a consultation. Thank you.